Welcome to the fourth and final part of the Transplant Medication Educational DVD. This part will cover transplant medications focusing on supplements and other medicines. Supplements and over-the-counter medications are available without a prescription. Not all over-the-counter medications are safe for transplant patients to take. We absolutely do not recommend transplant patients take any herbal products. Some examples of these herbal products would be ginseng, melatonin, and St. John's wort. These products are not regulated by the FDA, so the ingredients may not be consistent one bottle to the next. A lot of the herbal products also interfere with your transplant medications and your immune system. Always check with your transplant coordinator or pharmacist before taking any over-the-counter medication. As we previously talked about, grapefruit and grapefruit juice should not be eaten after transplant because it can affect your anti-rejection medications. Grapefruit can be hidden in the ingredients, so always read your labels. Grapefruit is known to be in sodas such as Fresca and Squirt. Here I have listed common over-the-counter supplements that are often taken after transplant. Most of these medications are available to buy at the pharmacy without a prescription. The first two medicines listed are calcium and vitamin D. Both of these medicines are taken for bone health as some of your transplant medications can increase your risk for reduction in your bone mineral density over time. One important thing to point out about calcium is that it must be separated from your anti-rejection medications by at least two or four hours. The third medicine listed is a multivitamin, which is taken for general health. The fourth medication listed is biotin, which is something we recommend to people to prevent or to treat hair loss related to tacrolimus. The fifth medication listed is aspirin, which is usually taken to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Over-the-counter aspirin comes in two different strengths. 325 milligrams and 81 milligrams. Unless the higher dose is listed on your discharge medi medication sheet or your transplant doctor increases your dose to the higher dose, you should be taking the low dose of aspirin, which is 81 milligrams. The final category of medications include famotidine or pepsid, ranitidine or Zantac, omeprazole or Prilosec, pantoprazole or Protonix, and lansoprazole or Prevacid. Remember when I said that prednisone can slightly increase your risk for having acid reflux and sometimes leading to stomach ulcers? These medications dramatically reduce this risk by lowering the production of acid in your stomach. There are many safe over-the-counter medications for transplant patients. For aches and pains, Tylenol, Thermacare heat wraps, and Bengay are okay for every transplant patient to use. The amount of Tylenol allowed per day depends on the type of organ you received. We will review this information in the next couple of slides. If you develop a cough or sore throat, you may use Mucinex, Delsum, or Chloroseptic lozenges. All of the medications listed are brand names. So using the store brand or generic formulation, if it's available, is acceptable as well and will likely save you some money. If you have allergies, develop a cold or flu, or have congestion, you may take Tylenol cold and flu, Sudafed PE, Benadryl, Claritin, Chlortrimeton, or Zyrtec. Again, these are brand names, and you can certainly use the generic or store brand if available. Since you are no longer allowed to use medications like ibuprofen, Motrin, naproxen, Aleve, or aspirin for pain, I want to spend a couple of minutes on Tylenol. Tylenol is in many combination over-the-counter products such as Tylenol cold and flu and Dayquil. Tylenol is available in a regular strength tablet, which is 325 milligrams, and extra strength tablet, which is 500 milligrams. It is very important to keep track of how much Tylenol you are taking throughout the day 
because if you take too much, you could damage your liver. As I mentioned before, the max dose of Tylenol per day depends on the type of organ you received. For liver transplant patients, they should not exceed 2,000 milligrams of Tylenol in one day. This is equivalent to four extra strength Tylenol tablets. For kidney and pancreas transplant patients, they should not exceed 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol in one day. This is equivalent to six extra strength Tylenol tablets. There are certain medicines that you need to avoid after transplant. I mentioned before that you can no longer take medications like ibuprofen, Motrin, naproxen, Aleve, or extra aspirin for pain. These medications are part of a class of medications called NSAIDs. NSAIDs can increase your risk for stomach ulcers and bleeding and are also very hard on your kidneys, so it's best to avoid them. There are many over-the-counter medications for cold and flu that you should avoid as well. Many of these medications listed can actually boost your immune system, which is something we absolutely do not want after transplant because it can increase your risk of developing rejection. These medications include Zycam, Airborne, Coldies, Astra C, and Hall's Defense. Sudafed and Alka-Seltzer Plus should be avoided in patients with high blood pressure because these medications can increase your blood pressure. Of course, any products with NSAIDs in it should also be avoided. It's great to know as many of these medications as possible, but in case you forget, we provide a list of safe and unsafe over-the-counter medications in your transplant binder. This list is located on the last two pages of the medication section of the binder. This will be reviewed with you while you are in the hospital for transplant. There are over-the-counter medications that are safe for transplant patients to use, but only if certain rules are followed. Tums, Mylanta, and Maalox are all over-the-counter medications used for heartburn. They are okay to take, except they must be separated from your anti-rejection medications. They must be taken either two hours before or four hours after your anti-rejection medications. Do not take them at the same time because they can interfere with the absorption of your anti-rejection medications, which could put you at risk for rejection. Like Tums, Mylanta, and Maalox, milk of magnesia, which is used for constipation, must also be separated from your anti-rejection medications. Diarrhea can happen after transplant, whether it's a side effect of a medication such as mycophenolate or a symptom of an infection. If you develop diarrhea after transplant, you should always contact your transplant coordinator and do not take Imodium unless your transplant coordinator tells you to. In summary, most insurance companies do not cover over-the-counter medications, so you may need to buy them from the pharmacy. Use the last two pages in your medication section of the transplant binder as a reference for safe and unsafe products over the counter. If something is not listed in this section and you would like to try it, always call your transplant coordinator or transplant pharmacist before starting it. If, ever, if you ever have any questions regarding the safety of an over-the-counter medicine, again, please speak with your transplant coordinator and or pharmacist. I would like to thank you for watching our transplant medication educational video, and I hope that you found it very helpful. If you have any questions, please call the transplant pharmacist or coordinator. On behalf of the transplant pharmacy team at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, have a wonderful day.